So this is the Taking Liberties Women's Suffrage in Liverpool display. Uh, we developed it with the 1918 Club, which is a local women's organisation which was actually set up by Eleanor Rathbone in 1918 when the Representation of the People Act was introduced. Um, the, we worked with the, with the ladies, uh, they selected the items from our collections, uh, they wrote the labels to kind of put across the importance of women's, the women's suffrage movement in Liverpool and there's some really key objects from our collection and I think it looks really great. In the display case we have a, a range of objects. Uh, we have this lovely scarf which is one of my favourites. Um, it's a motoring scarf um, and it's in the colours of the Women's Social Political Union. Um, it's the colours which people normally associate with the suffragette movement but of course there were the suffragists which were non-militant campaigners and the suffragettes which used violence. So we have the green, purple and white of the WSPU here in the scarf um, and we see Votes for Women which is obviously a well-known slogan for the campaign. Um, this was sold for about three shillings, you could buy it mail order or in the WSPU shops and of course items like this were, were sold to raise money for the cause for the campaign for, for women to continue fighting. Um, we have um, various documents here, we have um, this kind of Christmas message written by um, a, a suffragette from the Wirral, um, Isabel Abraham, and this was actually written on Christmas Day, and you can see very closely that the, the letterhead has votes for women, a little icon in the, in the top there. So she was, even on Christmas Day, she was thinking about spreading the word and, and sending suffrage message to, to, to fellow supporters. We have this beautiful illuminated scroll which was presented to Eleanor Rathbone. Um, she was um, a suffragist as opposed to a suffragette. She uh, is very well known in the city um, as a, a women's campaigner and supporter and she was instrumental in helping to um, secure women the vote for the first time in 1918 with the representation of, of the People Bill. Obviously there was campaigns right across the country um, from various different um, suffrage groups, some using um, militancy and some using um, campaigning, but also talking to local politicians, trying to persuade them. Um, but the, for a lot of people, this, this peaceful campaigning took too long, nothing happened, and that's when deeds, not words, really came in. Um, actions, not, not talking. Um, lots of people thought that nothing was going to be achieved, nothing had happened so far after decades and decades of talking to politicians and the Liberal government. Um, Asquith wasn't a supporter of uh, women's rights. Um, so that's when militancy came in. The WSPU was started in Manchester in 1903 with the Pankhursts. Um, and in Liverpool there was, there was the mix of suffragists and suffragettes. In fact, across the city, people planted um, bombs in pillar boxes, in the cotton exchange, um, windows were smashed in, in the uh, free trade hall uh, in Kensington. So the, there was that mix of campaigning in the, in the city as well. But like I said, Eleanor Rathbone um, was very much a suffragist. She didn't use the, the militancy campaign. She was part of the NUWSS, which is the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies. And that was a national organisation and Liverpool had its own branch. Um, so in 1918, uh, when some women over the age of 30 who owned property or if their husbands owned property were given the vote, that was about 40% of women in the country. So it was a landmark bill giving women the vote for the first time. But let's not forget, it wasn't for everyone. People who had campaigned, who had been jailed, who had undergone forcible feeding. Some of these people still didn't get the vote after this time if they weren't of the right age or the right class. But these, um, this illuminated scroll, this casket and a cheque was presented to Eleanor by the, the, the Liverpool Suffrage Society in thanks for what she'd done as uh, heading the organisation, the NUWSS in Liverpool. We have a, a bit of a mystery object in the corner here. Obviously, it's a, it's a telescope made of brass uh, and leather, uh, but actually it's inscribed um, to Amy Johnson, 1906, from the Liverpool Suffrage Society. Um, we, we've looked into who Amy Johnson may be. Um, we think she may be associated with the Sunderland uh, Suffrage Society, but we don't know why the Liverpool 
Suffrage Group presented her with this telescope in 1906. It might be to do with the formation of, of the Liverpool branch, but we're not entirely sure. So we'd love it to, to find out more. And if, if anybody has any information, please do let us know. We have um, a lovely cat figurine in the middle here. Um, it has votes for women around the bottom of the edge. And at first, I think a lot of people's reaction is, oh, isn't that lovely? That, that's a lovely kind of um, souvenir of, of, of the suffrage campaign. But actually, it can be viewed in two different ways. Um, there were lots of anti-suffrage groups set up by both men and women who didn't want women to have the vote. And in a lot of these kind of... Um, these campaigns which poked fun at the suffragettes, they used cats to kind of promote this idea of mewing women or vicious women. You'll see in postcards sometimes that the cats are very vicious and it's kind of this attack of women wanting to, to remove themselves from that domestic sphere where a lot of people thought that's the only thing that they were good for. So really you can view this little cat in two different ways. We, do, we think it's an anti-suffrage campaign item because you'll see the cat is a very mewing kind of cat. But later, of course, there's the connection with the cats, with the Cat and Mouse Act as well, where women who were in prison and forcibly fed um, many, many times over and over again, it was very, uh, very harsh on the body. Um, lots of people were affected for the rest of their lives, the effects of being forcibly fed in prison. Um, so the, the Cat and Mouse Act was introduced by the Liv the Liberal government, once the, the women were, were deemed to be kind of just about okay to be released uh, without causing them further harm, which of course would produce a martyr for the campaign, lots of these women were released from prison only to be caught again and brought back. So it's this cat and mouse act, the, the being let, let go, being caught again, being brought back to prison and the whole cycle starting again really. And just here on the right is a lovely range of um, suffrage campaign badges. We have the WSPU, the No Vote, No Tax badge. Um, there's a, a badge here of Christabel Pankhurst, which was um, Emmeline Pankhurst's daughter, a, a leading figure of the um, suffragette campaign. Um, give women the vote and votes for women against the WSPU. Fashion and the colours of the campaign were very important to the suffragettes. Obviously, they wanted to be visible, but the leaders of the campaign were, used fashion in a very clear way. They wanted um, the, the ladies to look very respectable, to, to wear their best clothes, but also to have the colours of their respective campaigns in, in relation to the WSPU. It would be the green, the white and the purple, but other suffrage groups had their own colours as well. So when we look at black and white photographs, you don't always see that kind of range of colours on display, but looking looking very respectable and, and having the colours and really being very clear in their cam campaign was very important to the suffrage uh, societies and what they were trying to achieve. So this uh, fantastic mosaic sculpture is of uh, Mary Bamba, a revolutionary woman by uh, artists Carrie Reichard and Nick Reynolds. Uh, Mary Bamba was a, a fantastic figure in Liverpool. She campaigned for women's rights, particularly working class women's rights. She wasn't a suffragist or a suffragette, but she was very much um, a campaigner for women working in factories and also uh, the dissemination of contraceptive advice. For a lot of women in Liverpool, she was a very radical campaigner for, for the rights of women. And she's remembered in this statue, but also um, her daughter was um, Bessie Braddock, the Liverpool Labour MP. So obviously her radical ideals were passed on to her daughter who continued to fight for the rights of Liverpool women.